Just thank you, Elliot Friedman, for joining me. Insta, you can finish the text. There's no problem. You're a busy go. man. We understand it. Things are happening always. This is 3 of 32 with Elliot Friedman, brought to you by GMC and the new GMC Sierra 84X. Anything good on there that I need to know about? No, on the phone. Uh, well, I'm wearing the watch, too. So that, <laughs> okay, so you're looking so at them so both just to make sure. I don't sure. miss anything. <laughs> yeah, That's no, really understood. Good. No, nothing good. All right, do you like Just the... Brian Spear, so it's all garbage. Oh, nice. Old yeah. producer Brian Spear for me, current producer and longtime producer. How long have you worked with Brian Spear? Now Since that I think 1994. About it. 1994. There's been a couple of years off. There was a, a brief separation. <laughs> yes, yes. Who was going to take the kids? Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Now, we've been back together for most of the last 30 right. years. Uh, Sid and I discussed it. I ended up with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Elliot Friedman is in studio. I got 32 thoughts right here. I printed it out myself, started highlighting a few things to discuss. Sure. Uh, why don't we start with what Dan Murphy was talking about? Okay. And, and listen, I, I know this has been dissected from a couple of different angles, but as you kind of let it marinate and realize that you are watching end of days for the head coach and the captain of the team, Elliot. Um, I, I got to wonder, how long will this take? I, I think, the, uh, Tim, that it's, it's probably going to be next week. Yeah. Um, I am like most people, I think. I don't like this. Yeah. Um, I, I don't enjoy watching it. Um, <clears throat> and I think that the, the thing that, like, you know, it's funny that someone called me today and says, you know, you're the guy who's been reporting it. And I said, I know. And uh, I don't like it very much. Um, it's news. They're, they're going to make a change. But uh, I, I wish they would have. You know, I, I heard what Bruce said there. And it's like, to be honest, like, I would hope that if I was in that situation, and I hope I never am, a, I would carry myself as well as he has, and B, I would give the same answer, as in I knew what I was getting into when I came here. Look, like, Tim, like, we work in this business. You and I are very lucky to be in this business as long as we've been. Yeah. I, I've been in it now for 30 years. How long have you been in it for? Yeah, like 25. Exactly. Yeah. Like, how many people do we know who survive? Like, this business, media, it chews up and it spits out. Right. So. You know, we've seen it. We're 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 very lucky. Um, I, I wish they would have done it already. But Jim, as Jim Rutherford said on Monday, he's he's not doing that. He's the coach until he's not the coach. The the, the interesting thing about this is how blunt Rutherford has been. Yeah. How open and honest he's been. Yeah. And yet still, people don't like what he's been saying because there's so much to do here well I, I think that first of all never criticize bluntness in our yeah. business like we always rip people for being full of cliches and not telling us the truth well you can't have it both ways either no. you want the you want the cliches or you want the honesty and on Monday Jim Rutherford gave us the honesty and I won't criticize that <laughs> I think the reason you're seeing a lot of the criticism of of how he's handling this is because people really like Boudreaux yeah and and people also imagine themselves in, in this situation, like, you know, like he has to handle this and everybody's watching. Now, all the world's a stage now in the social media era. All of our lives are out there. But I think there's a lot of us who look at this and they say, how would we feel if we were in that situation? And nobody wants to be in that situation. And I think also, I think a lot of us would like to think if we were the person in charge of that situation, we would end it as quickly as we could. Right. Okay, so let's talk about the captain a little bit. Like, what are you, what are you hearing on Bo Horvat? I think there's, there's, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I, I, as I said, and you, if you have the column there, I, I wrote it. I thought that because Miller uh, had an above... Did you write this thing? <laughs> Actually, I, I have ghostwriters. Nice. Uh, uh, an, arm, an army of... Uh, yes. An army of ghostwriters. Um, Monkeys at uh, <laughs> type writers, type writers, type yeah. You know, I, I, I really thought that because, like, one of the lines I like is the, the surest predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And the Vancouver Canucks, like, we all thought last year that JT Miller was getting traded in the summer. And all of a sudden they signed him, and what we found out was it happened in, like, three days. Right. Like, they basically called, like, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and the deal was done on a Friday. So because that happened, I've always sat there and said there's the possibility that this could happen with Horvat too. Like I said, Jim Rutherford, he, he drowned that theory. Right. And I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, I just don't think they're willing to get to what Horvat's market value is. Um, you know, I, I hope the Canucks don't regret this. 
Uh, I think Horvat's a hell of a player. And uh, I think there's a lot of interest out there in him. I, I think the most interesting thing is who wants him for a rental? Like a team like Minnesota, I could see them wanting him for a rental and not being able to do an extension. Right. A team like Seattle, I could see them mm -hmm. wanting both. A team like Boston, I could see them wanting both. I'm just not sure the, the, the Bruins are going to be able to fit it necessarily right now. But I, I, I think the biggest question is going to be is, Who's trading him as a, for him as a rental? Because Minnesota would have to if it was them. And who's trading for him for term? And I think if a team like Seattle got him, I think it would be for term. Hmm. That's an interesting one, especially when you look at the, the division standings. Like, it is awfully close. And I was going to go to uh, the second headline as we scrolled through your thing about the Ottawa Senators and a defenseman. But since we're in the Pacific, are the Edmonton Oilers in the market for a defenseman? Is that kind of priority number one? I, I, th right I think so. I, I think th they want to create cap room. Like, I, you know, I think yeah. we've all figured that this is going to be Puliarvi's last year in Edmonton. I think we all recognize that he needs a fresh start, and it's going to happen. Uh, it might end up happening sooner than we thought, hmm. uh, Tim. But uh, yes, I think they're looking for a defenseman. And I wouldn't. I think now, <coughs> Yanmark and Costin, they feel more comfortable with them as players, and they yeah. may not be searching for a forward as much. But a left shot defenseman. I really thought it was going to be Klingberg. Klingberg almost went to Edmonton in the summer, and uh, they had to make another move. Uh, and I think it was going to be at the time. I think it was probably going to be Tyson Berry. Right. Um, but they they didn't do it. They they couldn't pull it off. Berry's had a good year for them. Um, I think, and I don't think they feel Klingberg is what they need. So I think Klingberg will go elsewhere, and they'll look for something else on the left side. That'll be like Edmondson or Gavrikov or Gostas Bear or or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and the Ottawa Senators, I just talked to Kyle Bukoskis, Josh Norris coming back. Yeah. You feel like they didn't really get a shot at was a, what was a big year for them because of some injuries and a bad start. Could, could they try to add here at the deadline? I do to, think yeah. so. I, I do think so. I, I think the, the Senators feel it's very important for them to finish the year strong. I do too. And I think if they go out and they get a defenseman, even one who's a rental, as long as they don't pay a huge price, it's a, it's a test drive. Right. You know, could they test drive a, a left shot D um, for the rest of the season. I, I, I think it's, uh, or a D for the rest of the season. I, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's something they're considering. I, I, I do think they feel that they can't have another season where they just drag their way to the end. Now they've got something unusual is happening there tonight. You know, Matthew Joseph is not playing. Um, DJ Smith would not indicate what that's about. That set off a lot of alarm bells mm -hmm. because you know, DJ Smith's a pretty honest guy, so I think we're all still trying to figure out what exactly is going on there. Ah, I see. That wasn't maybe the... No, that was not, that was not just, the just making Just making sure. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier today, uh, to be honest with you, I was kind of tired of the subject before we even got to the subject of Ivan Provera. Yeah. Uh, I will say once again that I am for equality, and if you're against equality, I believe that you are on the wrong side of history, yeah. period. And I just, I'm tired of everyone making their statement or trying to make their statement in and around that. But I also know that it's a story and there's some yep. continued fallout surrounding that. W what's kind of the latest that you're hearing today on Ivan Provera? Well, first of all, I just like to say that I don't like anything that makes people feel excluded. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely hate it. I, I don't like I don't like people feeling excluded like I, I've you know I've had a lot of I've had a few I shouldn't say a lot I've had a few DMs today from uh, hockey fans who were like uh, you know um, you know like this bothers me or I'm I'm a member of the LGBTQ community and mm -hmm. I feel excluded and you know I always tell uh, people who write me with messages like that like in in my NHL Elliot Friedman's very small piece in the NHL you're always welcome right. you're you're always always welcome and uh, I hate things that make people feel excluded. I, I really do. It, it's, it bothers me a lot. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I think I talked about with one of those fans is, you know, I, and I, I'll tell you this, it bothers a lot of people that, you know, and I know why it happens. One flyer didn't wear the Pride jersey last night. Right. And everyone else did. Correct. And, you know, I, I, you know to me... I think that that's actually a good sign. Like, you know, Tim, you, you know, you're, t I think, 10 years younger than me. Like, I was born in 1970. There was a lot less acceptance n then than there is now. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I really do believe that most people don't give a flying whatever mm -hmm. about what people are, as long as they treat people nicely. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I, I think the vast majority of people think like that. You know, uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I, I think, um, 
I think the Flyers considered, like, do we not do the night? Right. And I and I think that they have players there who feel very strongly about this, and I'm glad they didn't, because I think that we should be, if if something's positive and makes people feel included, I'd rather yeah. 23 guys do it and one doesn't than 24 guys not being given the opportunity to do it. I did go to You Can Play's uh, Twitter account. They're effusive in their praise the Flyers. of the Philadelphia Flyers. And I found that very interesting. In Like, listen, I understand why people go to Twitter and make the statements that they make. Mm -hmm. And I understand why, you know, the comments end up the way the comments end up, especially in 2023. But I found that very interesting. I don't know how many people went and looked. Mm -hmm. But I think they were on that side. And listen, like... I don't want false allies. Mm -hmm. At least I know where someone stands and where they're at. I'll leave room for him to come back if he wants to rethink this. But one of the most ridiculous things I heard was that he wants out of Philly, and this was like a way for him to kind no. of force a hand. No. Is there any truth to that whatsoever? No, I, I, I think they already know how he feels. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, the, the other thing, too, is like I just like uh, I, I talked to some people. I'm not convinced they had the power to suspend him. Like, there's a lot of lawyers yeah, who work for the league, lawyers, the Players yeah. Association, and Comcast, which owns the, the Flyers. Like, even if, even if they wanted to not dress them, I'm not sure they could have.